Thanks so much, Marjorie. I have so been looking forward to this panel because it is exciting when I think about how many different um, new initiatives we're seeing in the pro-life movement, and it's really um, exciting to be a part of that, a part, you know, to, to nail down one part of a larger whole that is all working together in a similar direction. And I want to thank you for being a part of that. It's exciting to me to, here we are pretty early on a Friday morning. I'm sure um, there were so many exciting things going on. Uh, we were down at XPAC for a while last night, late into the evening last night. So thank you all for being here today, particularly because we are excited to be bringing um, and raising the issue of life at CPAC. You know, traditionally there's been um, a little bit of a question really about, you know, does do the social issues, how much of a part do they play in the conservative movement? And so your presence here today helps us to answer that question with a resounding yes. So let me let me start with another question. How many of you guys are feeling optimistic? How, do you think we're winning in the pro-life movement? Yes. All right, well, then maybe you don't need to see all the data, but maybe this will encourage you a little bit. I, want, I think it's helpful to look at the images and to see that we are indeed winning. You know, I get the question about this a lot from the media because they like to think, you know, they want to write the, they want to write our obituary. They want to be done with this issue. You know, we're so pesky to them. It's like, come on, don't you know, America is pro-choice, get over it, let's just move on and quit talking about it. The truth of the matter is that despite the fact that abortion is the regime, the legal regime of our land, there is a lot that we can do to limit abortion right now, even before Roe v. Wade hits the ash heap of history. A lot of people don't know this great data that Michael knew from the University of Alabama nailed down for us. He proved empirically that when parental involvement laws go into effect in the state, you get a 13 to 19% abortion decrease. Now hold on, you might have known that, but I don't know if you know this next slide, which is really, really key. When you move that to two parent notification, you get a 31% abortion decrease. Come on, that's breathtaking. You know, when people ask me about the, the constitutional law work that our attorneys are doing, and they say, you know, does it really make a difference to pass a law that just fences abortion in? I point to this data and I say, a 30% decrease, that's pretty rocking. The truth of the matter is there's only three states right now, Minnesota, Mississippi, and North Dakota, that have this piece of legislation. So when people ask me, you know, what can we do? What can we do if we can't overturn Roe v. Wade tomorrow? I point to them and I say, you know what? Only three states have this particular law. Let's get out there. Let's make a difference. Let's get some more of this going on. So what's exciting to me is I see the pro-life movement maturing and becoming more sophisticated. Um, Marjorie mentioned that each one of the groups represented here today has been doing something that's really pushing the envelope to catch up to some of the uh, some of the things we're seeing coming out of MoveOn.org. This was our contribution to that. Um, it's fun to be here coming right off of the March for Life. You know, we were sitting around a couple weeks before the March for Life saying, what can we give the media to talk about that's new? You know, they've been coming to the March for so long. Uh, I think I advanced accidentally. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you heard about the virtual March for Life. I hope next year you'll hear even more about it because we want to go international next time. But in the space of two weeks, um, we put together a virtual March for Life where people could go online and pick an avatar and they could be marching alongside the people who are physically here in Washington, D.C. Um, to, to take a stand. Some people were coming back to me and saying, Charmaine, aren't you worried that, um, that some people might not show up? Truth of the matter is no, I wasn't worried at all because what we're looking for is to leverage, to leverage, to use technology to get the most out of every single person's activity. And that's what's exciting about the opportunities that are in front of us. The other thing that's exciting about the online activism that you guys in this room represent at this particular conference is these people who are up here on the screen. The politicians need to know with irrefutable evidence that we care about this issue, that we're mobilized, that we aren't going away, that this isn't a topic that we're ready um, to move on from. These are just um, a handful of the close to 40 some leaders and political leaders who, I, frankly, to be honest with you, I told my team, I said, you know, we don't have time to do too much with this avatar thing. So, you know, let's just nail down getting people signed up. And um, thankfully, uh, and 
boy, just a big shout out to Governor Sarah Palin who came on board and said, you know, I'd really, I'd really like one of those avatars. The next thing you know, our phone started ringing off the hook, and you can see Governor Huckabee, Michael Steele, John McCain, um, Dement, Boehner, they, they, they all came on board, which is exciting because you know um, we, we hear a lot about we hear a lot about our president and his his stance against life, but there are some really terrific. Uh, leaders in the political realm who are willing to take a stand and we need to support them. I'm going to let Carrie do most of the talking about um, uh, about the Tebow ad. I just want to you know, say what an honor it was to stand with Focus on the Family because um, you know it's just fun to see our movement and uh, doing something that's as creative and wonderful as that ad was. So in order to express our support we partnered with LifeNews.com uh, Stephen Ertel doing a great job over there. 273,000 people came on to Facebook to say we stand with Focus on the Family and Tim Tebow in this ad. Um, you know, I, I, I know, I think every single one of us did some sort of debate with Now in the weeks leading up to it. Um, it was fascinating to me. I ended up going up against their VP of Communications. She was advocating censorship, saying, you know, take this ad down. I mean, what kind of liberal value is that? Oh. <laughs> Just a little plug for our online activism. You know, I, I people say to me, "How do you have time to do Twitter?" I love Twitter. You know, it's you're 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 stuck in line, you're stuck in a cab, you put something quickly up. And then in conclusion, um, to me, the exciting thing about the pro-life movement is this is the human rights issue of our day. Marjorie already mentioned it, and I just want to second it. It's such an honor to be a part of this movement. We stand in the tradition of men like Abraham Lincoln. It is so important for us to emphasize this at CPAC as we're talking about freedom and liberty. Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. We can't just focus on whether or not um, we're creating jobs or addressing the stimulus because without the right to life, you don't have people to take those jobs. Abraham Lincoln, you know, took on the great human rights challenge of his day. You know, we stand, you know, as women here, he, he was making common cause with Harriet Beecher Stowe. There have been great women throughout history who've stood up uh, for the rights of the least of these. Martin Luther King, civil rights. This is our issue. This is our time. As Marjorie said, we are heading into some really, really critical days. Thank you for showing up here this morning to stand with us, and I just ask you to, to stay energized, stay excited, because we're going to make a difference in the days ahead.